I really hope that if you have been with me for all of these seven potentially deadly church sicknesses, that I have not depressed you. I mean, I'm just thinking about it. Here we are on sickness number six, and I've gone over them again and again and again. And you, you may be so down that you're saying, I'm just going to turn off this video and not listen to Rainer anymore. I get that. There's a greater purpose to this. There's a positive purpose to this. I want us to identify where there may be lack of health so that we can get well. I want to see our churches revitalized. It's my prayer that your church will be making a difference in the kingdom instead of having one or more of these sicknesses. So I hope that you understand that there is a greater and more positive motive to going over these sicknesses rather than just to tell you how sick many of our churches are. The desire is to see churches go to greater health. Okay, you might have asked at this point, are these in any particular order? We've gone from attitudinal angst, number one, slippage syndrome, number two, detailed distraction, number three, institutional idolatry, number four, Activity acclamation number five, we're about to cover number six, purposeless prayer, and number seven, detrimental defensiveness. The answer to your question is no. I'm not necessarily calling these random order. It may be that these are more in frequency of how we have heard them because these begin to come naturally to us as I reviewed responses on the blog, podcast, and particularly in church answers where we're getting a constant flow of information. So I do think this has to do more with what I'm hearing from church leaders than priority. For example, I would have to put purposeless prayer near the top instead of at number six, instead of what are some of the highest priorities that we need to be focusing on. But however, because of the frequency in which I see these coming in, I have listed them in this particular order. Okay, what is the definition that we are using for purposeless prayer? It's defined this way. The church illness where corporate prayer is non-existent or steeped in non-useful tradition. Once again, the church illness where corporate prayer is non-existent or steeped in non-useful tradition. Maybe I'm, we, we need to define corporate prayer. We obviously have prayer where an individual believer prays to God in our own quiet time, in our own personal time, that we have this relationship one-on-one -on -one where Christ is our higher priest and we can pray through Him and have access to the throne of God to petition Him and to be in fellowship with Him. That is personal prayer. Corporate prayer is something within the church where more than one person comes together for the purpose of gathering in powerful combined prayer. It's not necessarily everybody in the church praying, though it could be. It could only be a few people praying, but it's people coming together for the purpose of praying in the local church. Let me give you an example. I got a text just a little while ago, and it was from a person in my community group named Paul. And Paul says this, at the altar, and that's his phrase that he means we'll be praying together. And he sends his text to several of us in the church and says, we'll be at the altar. And in this case, he said, we'll be at the altar tomorrow morning. I'm not able to come, but many will come. Some will come. And they'll come together. You know what they do? They walk over all of the church facilities. They pray for where people are going to sit. They pray for in each of the rooms, for the, the kids that will be in those rooms, for the community group that will be taking place on the second floor. They pray for safety. They pray that people may be moved by God's Spirit. They just come and pray, and then they have a time of concluding prayer. They do this every single week. Paul is just, he's one of my heroes because he has been persistent in leading our church in this corporate prayer. Corporate prayer certainly can take place in a worship service where everyone is praying together. Once again, in our church, we have a time where we pray together. And it's not a, just a, a traditional do things as usual prayer. We actually are praying over the one who will be preaching. We're praying over the service. We even had guided prayer on the, the screen in front of us so we can be reminded how to pray. So corporate prayer is the church, church members, more than one, coming together to pray in the context of a local church. Okay, but what are some signs of purposeless prayer? 
maybe that's a strong word, but it's really a strong indictment. Is it not possible that there are times in our church that we pray and it does not have the true connection with God? We are doing it just because we've done it before. Let, let, let me give you some examples. Perfunctory prayer. You know, sometimes when I've done perfunctory prayer, blessing for a meal. I will, I will say some things, but am I really trying to communicate with God or am I just trying to do something that is traditional? Now, hear me well. I still am going to do blessings before meals. And I'm still going to be an example of what's for my children and for my wife. But there have been some times when I'm not even thinking about God when I'm doing the blessing. Which I didn't have to say that, but that's a reality. Sometimes instead of connecting with God during that blessing for the meal, I'm going through a routine or a ritual. That's an example of a perfunctory prayer. Have, have, you, have you ever heard someone pray the same thing over and over? Um, not, not in one prayer, but whenever they're going to pray, they're going to say the same words. I'm not accusing those people of, of not connecting with God and having a real desire to communicate with Him, but you wonder. You wonder if the offertory prayer all the time is bless the gift and the giver, if the people are really praying to God at that time, or are these just words emanating from their mouth? I've got to be careful not to be too judgmental in this, but simply to say that in many times in our church, when we say, do you have prayer in your church, they have more perfunctory prayer than dynamic prayer. Another type of prayer, unfortunately, is showmanship prayer. I remember one time when I was going through a tough time, somebody said they wanted to pray over me. Certainly, I'm going to always want prayer. And in that prayer, they prayed and they said, and God, you know all the things I'm going through. And, and, and they just went through this long list of things that, that were bothering them and all the struggles that they had had. Well, I wanted to just pause him for a moment and say, are you giving me a list of your problems and trying to compare mine to yours? Or are you really praying to God? God already knew your problems. Why, why are you saying those type of things? Is that an example of showmanship prayer where I just want to pray over you and and just look good again, i got to be careful. I am not the judge, but is it possible that a lot of our prayers are perfunctory and some of our prayers are showmanship just to show that we can pray with eloquence, with words? Actually, there was a group of people in the New Testament that did that, and they were called the Pharisees. And they would pray, and they would have these words emanating from their mouths. But they weren't connecting with God. They weren't communicating with God. They were showmanship so the rest of the world could see how holy, I say with sarcasm, how holy they were. Another thing is physical needs only prayer. I want to be careful here as well. Anytime there's a physical need, that person deserves and needs our prayers. But in many of our churches, that is the full extent of corporate prayers. The list is who is sick physically and who has physical needs instead of what are the, all the needs of the church. I always want to be careful in, in you know, some, some of the sarcastic comments like a prayer list is an organ recital about which of the organs are not functioning right now. I don't want to say those things. I just simply want to say if it's only physical prayer, are we truly interceding for people who are lost without Christ? Are we interceding for the gospel to go to the nations? Are we interceding for our church to be unified and together? There are other things beyond physical, but they should not exclude physical needs. So how do we understand corporate prayer? We understand corporate prayer is when some of the individuals in the church truly come together to intercede to God for specific needs within the church or specific needs for the church moving beyond itself. Corporate prayer is communicating with God where two or more are gathered and agreeing in His name. It is not something that a church might could do. It is something that a church must do. And as you begin to review what type of prayer takes place in your church corporately with people gathered, is it possible that you really don't have a dynamic prayer ministry? You simply have people going through the motions are going through tradition. Here is a warning to all people, all leaders in churches. Don't move forward with anything in your church without meaningful prayer. That for a second should you take an initiative, a, a, new, a new way to reach the community, 
or some major change in the church, what you're basically saying if you move forward without prayer is we got this, God. We don't need you. And when you do that, whatever that initiative is, I would hope would fail because God has not been asked to be a part of it. Is this what is taking place in your church or are you really communicating with God and coming together to ask him to make a difference in your life and in the church? This could be one of the deadliest illnesses in the church. A prayerless church really is not a church at all. So it is my sincere prayer that your church not be a purposeless praying church, but it be a church that prays with powerful purpose that God may make a difference in your congregation. Thank you once again for being here for the Rainer Report. It's always my joy to host you on these Wednesdays, and even though you may view it on a different day of the week, we release it on a Wednesday. And I thank you that you have been going through this series with me. Now, here's the word for you. We've got one more sickness to cover. <laughs> that sounds funny. we got one more sickness to cover. We've got one more of these seven to go through. And it's one that maybe off the cuff doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you. Detrimental defensiveness. If you don't know what that means, come back and we'll be looking at that in the next video. Thanks once again to Costco. Tim Songster, the CEO, the design bill firm. You need to contact those people at churchdesign.com. If you have a facility need, building something, remodeling something, they are the best. I know because two of my sons are using them even as I speak. We'll see you next week as we go through the seventh of the seven potentially deadly church sicknesses.